Over the weekend, I've been playing a lot of trials just so I can get some new gear, play with friends and also challenge myself against the more competitive players I face. Through the many matches I face, I've come across the most cheesiest loadouts that would make Chuck E. Cheese proud and dear god has most of my matches been utter pain facing against them. One of those cheesy builds that's been very common in my adventures involves the Staglock setup that requires a user to have a Warlock with the newly updated Stag Exotic and Bottom Tree Arc subclass. On paper, this should sound pretty simple to fight against, but this is one of those builds that can easily prevent teams from catching points or pushing up or anything in general unless they want to be destroyed for how strong your defences become. It sounds powerful and that's because it pretty much is, which is why I'm glad to show you this very unique PvP build that should help you traverse trials whether in teams or solo. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So to make this build lethal while mobile or stationary, you want to use the Attunement of Elements subclass when combined with the Stag Helm because of its passive and flexible nature of adapting to all environments. The Stag Helm is a very unique exotic that didn't get a lot of praise for what it did at one point, but as of recently with the new updated season, the Stag has now become one of the most top meta exotics to use for damage reduction. The exotic will provide you the option of gaining about 50% of your rift energy when you hit critical health and upon dying, you drop a healing well for your team to use. However, on top of this, you're also getting a 15% damage resistance while in your rifts, which now allows you to tank lethal shots with ease. Combining this with the subclass and perks, we can extend and improve this stack helps effects even more. Rising Storm allows us to recharge a super, grenade and mini energy upon its activation and makes it perfect for using it while based within our rifts or on the go. Electric Stagger Surge allows us to run faster, charge our wrist faster and allows our rift to last longer, a perfect perk while playing in groups or free as you'll always be the first one to get your wrist back up and running and faster mobility means quicker escapes if things get out of the hand. Arc Soul now provides you and your ally a Arc Soul when your wrists are active, which overall increases your TTK and will act like a turret and keep you active in knowing where the enemy is located. This with an effective team will allow you to pretty much stand your ground and tank the majority of your weapons or mini hits that before would have easily downed you in seconds. At the same time you can then go ahead and punish said players since you now have the advantage to easily counter. Do be aware though that this does not make you invincible as you can still be easily taken out through a multitude of weapons or ability options, some of which can easily one shot you and end your career there and then. For weaponry, I went with a long range and close range weapon that are both reliable at putting on pressure onto players and also capable of being extremely difficult to fight back against. The Vigilance Wing Pulse Rifle is a sleeper of a weapon to use in PvP for its constantly active part called Harsh Truths. This perk here will allow users to gain a constant health regen boost per allies who are killed and this can be very clutch on certain maps and engagements where you are weak but your allies get killed. Although slightly dark in nature, its benefits of keeping you alive works well when combined with the stag, as you can gain that extra bit of rift energy from reaching critical health and so forth. It also has another perk called Last Stand which will greatly increase weapon performance and recovery if you are the last person alive in your team. This perk combined with your rift can make 2 vs 1s or 1v1s a lot more easier to tackle while on your own as you are constantly being improved on for simply outliving your teammates. If you know what you're doing and you have the advantage, then this weapon combined with the build becomes very problematic for the majority of players you face against. As secondary, you want something fast, reliable and have a good range to it, and I have found success in using the Null Compulsion Fusion Rifle for its frame type and extra range it offers compared to the Cartesian coordinates. Although Cartesian has better assist which is a lot more stickier for landing shots, Null is a bit more viable in terms of per choice offering such as heating up and HIR rounds and the extra bit of range goes a long way for quickly dispersing a player for who may be charging at me with a shotgun or a sidearm. It's also in general just good to use a rapid fire frame time since they receive the buff to make them more lethal and compatible compared to the notorious high impact frames. Shotguns of all types are also good as alternatives but ideally slugs will bring you the best results in all maps if you can land your precision hits. For your heavy, it doesn't really have much of an effect in PvP, especially for trials environments, so anything here can work. Rocket launchers are probably best as you can fire and forget and not need to worry so much about hitting your target directly or not. 
Now your stats will play an important role in keeping you alive long enough to get your benefits going and also reap the rewards of doing so. Recovery and intellect will be your main focus in PvP as you want your rifts up and ready at all times, which is easy to achieve already, while intellect will require a few mods to help speed up the regen process and allow you to turn matches much more quickly. So for your recovery, you want to aim for a 60 to 80 as you're already gaining benefits from the stack once your daily departed kicks in. Remember, while you're in your rift, you're not invincible against all types of weapons or players, as they can easily damage or kill you with a high impact type weapon or ability. When this happens, daily departed will kick in and give you at least half your rift energy back, which can then be topped off through recovery mods such as perpetration and distribution mods. Nothing more is needed there as live or die, you're still getting that extra rift energy for free. Just make sure you don't challenge those with high impact weapons that can easily outdo your healing regeneration. Now your intellect should be aimed as high as possible as you'll want to turn the tide on many battles when you get the chance. A 60 to 100 is the suitable range you should aim for and then extend that stat area with mods such as ashes to assets for even more super energy out of kills. If you decide to use the ashes to assets mod, it would then be wise to get your discipline up to around 60, roughly, and support it with the grenade kickstart, absolution, or innovation mods. Ideally, if you can weaken another player just enough and corner them from escaping you, you can use your grenades to get a large boost of super energy back and some grenade energy back as well to repeat the process as many times as you like and thus be the first person on your team to get your super up and ready. This is important for trials as you can prevent the enemy team from turning the tide and slowly gain their wins back which you don't want at all. Because of how simple the design of the build is for PvP, you don't need any sort of charge like mods to make any sort of difference considering the build specialises more in trials. In normal 6v6 content, that's why I can then see the charge lights becoming a bit more applicable. So now let's go with the rest of the mods that incorporate the build. For head, we have minor intellect, ashes to assets, and pulse rifle targeting mod. Arm, we have intellect, grenade kickstart, and fastball mod. The chest, we have minor intellect, and double and flinching pulse rifle aim mod. Leg, we have discipline, absolution, and fusion scavenger mod. And then bond, we have discipline, perpetration, and distribution mod. Now, if you've been around since the start of the trials revamp, then you should be very familiar with the build and loadout that many players have opted into using. Because the stack has become stronger thanks to the recent update, the following build allows users to play more aggressive while within their rifts and not worry so much about losing a gunfight that before would occur so often. The constant health regen, rift regeneration and damage reduction makes it feel like you're playing as a raid boss while others do their best to stop you. Against one person using a loadout, it can become problematic to face but not impossible. Against three, you all know what they're doing and that's where most of the issues tend to arise especially if one has an empowering rift and another has the healing rift. And to be honest, that's not even the worst of it. Changing the subclass to stasis instead and opting into using whispers of chains and rhymes together can make you even more beefier to take on. So having one person with arc and another with stasis can make certain matches very easy for you, but a pain for others. There's so many ways and angles you can play this build and utilize the subclass benefits to become extremely tough to take on. It's sometimes a nightmare for most people to attempt anything knowing that they may not even have a chance of winning. However, like a lot of things, countering such a build is very easy if you're happy with being aggressive as well. As Rift users will always bunker down into one area, this will leave them little opportunity to move about and avoid being flanked on all sides, which is very easy to achieve if you have a team who are confident going solo to flank. On top of this, using powerful abilities such as Handheld Supernova, Seismic Strike, and Weighted Knife can easily one-shot or weaken those within the rifts, and by the time they try to fight back, it will be generally all over. Ultimately, using Stasis, Vortex, Solar, and Pulse Grenades will offer you the best options on preventing them from using the rifts and allowing you to push up while they are confused. The free grenade types will shut users down from using the rifts for a bit, which can put pressure on them to accommodate and support their team while stasis ultimately will prevent any sort of abilities being used whatsoever. So yes, Shadow Dive Hunters, you do have a place, funnily enough. Now, the success of the build is ultimately down to who you face and how well you work within your team to succeed in. You can easily turn losing fights into wins if you use your damage resistance smartly, and don't linger into one area too long as that becomes a bit too predictable. 
except from that, it's a very powerful build with plenty of options to mess around with. And the great thing about it is that anyone can use it and counter it, unlike certain builds that are currently plaguing PvP at the moment. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.